Hey, what's up guys? Today I'm gonna do something a little bit different and I'm gonna go over some of the new pattern tools that they implemented into Illustrator for 2021. I saw a couple of things whenever they released it when they were talking about it, but I hadn't really messed with it until recently. I was asked to help create a vector of a drawing somebody did to help it be screen print ready. And I decided to use the new like pattern, repeat tools, mirroring tools and things like that to see if I could um, do it a little bit easier. And I think it came out really cool. And since I don't really wanna show that uh, private work of those other people, I'm gonna do something similar to it based off of some clip art that I found online. All right, so the first thing that I'm gonna do is take this clip art here and I'm gonna create a template layer for it by double clicking on my layer and checking template. Then I'm gonna make sure that I use all of my, um, that I put all of my artwork on layer two. So I usually use something like a magenta or red to be able to see what I'm drawing over these things. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick this magenta. I'm going to adjust my stroke to three points with a curved cap or a rounded cap and a curved corner. So the first thing I'm gonna do here is create this circle shape with the regular tool for that. Um, pretty simple and easy. And I know this one is a little bit different. It's not exactly mirrored on this face, but the face that I'm going to draw will be just so we can use these tools to their full potential, or at least for this uh, tutorial. Okay, pen tool. I'm gonna go ahead and draw this eyebrow shape here. Then with this shape selected, go to object repeat, and I'm going to select mirror. And now you can see that it's kind of uh, isolated the image, similar to if you were working with a group or adjusting a pattern or a symbol. But this line right here represents where the mirroring will happen for your symmetry. So you can just grab this line and move it to where you want it to be your center mark. So now I have two eyebrows and with this thing still selected in this isolation mode, you can come in here and just start drawing on one side and it'll mimic everything over to the other side automatically. So I'm just gonna kind of loosely follow these lines because getting it exact doesn't really matter. And now here you can see where they meet. It gets a little weird because of how these points are. So I'm gonna find my point and that's not it. I'm going to move it around so you can really see how it mirrors and how it affects itself when it crosses over. So in order to make this rounded nose tip, I can just pull this shape or this line here as far as I need to, and then adjust the curve of it and where it lands just to get that perfectly smooth transition across the mirror. Now I'm going to adjust some things like how these points connect and it'll automatically update onto the other side. And that is the beautiful mirror options here. And I think it's really awesome and super helpful, especially if they mirror perfectly. So you can see that my line kind of goes in a weird area for these lips here. It's not exactly a mirrored image that I'm copying. So what I would do is really just kind of take these lines and take some liberties and start from that center point. So that way, whatever you're drawing outside of it is, is going to mirror itself pretty well still. And then you can adjust anything as you go. So even though this mouth is not perfectly where that original drawing is, it's still so much easier doing it this way than trying to figure out, you know, how to, how to, or, or not necessarily figure out, but drawing one side, grabbing everything and mirroring it after the fact. Like this way, everything is already here. All right just that whole eye and let's see I mean I am still kind of like drawing this in my style so imagine if you were doing this like a sketch you really can you know sketch out the full thing and maybe you don't have like a perfect circle or perfect symmetry but this way you can just go in and draw 
over it in your style and make it work. Now, once you have the base of this worked out, and let's say you do wanna go ahead and add in some of this shading that's here on this side of the nose, you can just press escape. It'll take you out of the isolation mode, and then anything that you draw outside now is going to be just like drawing anything else in Illustrator. It's its own piece. So if I click on this, you'll see it has this new like bounding box and it's sort of like a clipping mask. And it's really just um, showing you that this is a mirrored image and that you can still come double click inside of it and find your one half that you can edit. You can change things and they will still be updating automatically. You can add more illustration to it and it's just doing it inside of this isolated grid. So those are the basics. Actually, let me show you another little piece of this. So let's say you want to come back in here. So I double click to get back into the isolation mode. And then there are these handlebars here on your mirror and you can drag these and actually change the angle of what's being mirrored as you're drawing it. So you could do that from the beginning if you want to have it like an angled um, sort of thing, or you can do it after the fact and adjust it so that you don't necessarily have to mirror these things perfectly center. I think it's really good to know it's there because none of the other apps that I've used mirroring stuff have had that option for me. So I think it's good to know that it's there. And this center point is where you can adjust how far away it goes. And those are basically all of the tools and functions that you have here in this mirroring tool that I've found at least. I didn't watch any tutorials or anything for it. This is just for messing around with it. All right, I'm gonna hit escape. I'm gonna go back out and I'm gonna get rid of that one weird line that I have there because, because I want mine to be um, fully symmetrical. So let's turn our example layer back on. And now I wanna show you the rotate function. So these little like sun rays or whatever they are, I think they're pretty cool, but uh, I don't necessarily want to draw all of them. So what I'm going to do is take one of these wavy ones and draw one around my circle. And I'm going to use these tools to create a pattern of that one circling around this whole thing. So select your object that you want to rotate, go to object, repeat, radial. And now you can see it makes this pattern here automatically. That could be kind of cool on its own, but there's so many other functions and features on this one that'll really help you get it perfect. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna line the um, circle that they created up with my circle that I drew. Now, if you tap on this dial right here and drag upwards, you can see that it expands your pattern. So I'm gonna expand it so that my sun ray kind of loosely touches the circle that I made there. So now I'm going to double click and find my just one of these, like I guess only one of them is editable. So find the one that is editable and I'm gonna change it so that it actually lines up more with my sun. So I'm using the uh, letter R to create a new rotate point here. And then I'm just going to rotate my artwork so that both of those edges touch the edge of my circle of my sun. Now I'm gonna hit escape and it's gonna take me back to my radial tool options. And you can see this is already like, I could be done with this here and it would be totally fine and workable and so much quicker and faster than trying to draw multiple rays and put it around the sun. But I wanna show you some of the other options that they give you. So you can see there's two other dials here that you can grab and they do two different things. So this one right here with the up and down arrows, if you click and drag, it'll actually increase or decrease the number of instances of art pieces on your radial repeat. So I'm gonna drag it up so I get a few that are like kind of touching and I still have a few little weird bumps down here. So I'm going to just scale this slightly so that it all lines up. And there you go. I mean, that was super easy. Now I've got like, I was able to control it like by visually seeing how many it was adding rather than 
using math to do like a repeat on uh, you know a 360 degree curve and using command D to like repeat these things and all these like old ways that I used to do this. This is so much easier, so much better in my opinion. Now, another brilliant thing about it is that the art piece that I used to um, create my vectors when I was originally messing with this, it had two parts to it. So it wasn't like, it was more like if it was a sun and a moon. So here, since I already have this guy, I'm going to drag him out here and pretend that there's a sun and a moon. And now I have this part here covered, but the way that I was creating it, I couldn't necessarily just fill this in and color it in so that I could cover these pieces. So what you can do is select this. And now this dial here actually controls how many instances of this thing are shown so that it doesn't affect how many are there total, like dragging this one up and down where it's adding and subtracting instances. This one is more like masking them out. So if you pull this left handle over, you can see it starts to hide all of the instances over here on this side. Now, realistically, I need to hide these over here for what I'm trying to show. So I pull the right handle bar and it just pulls those things away. And then I was able to stick this little dude here. Here, let me go ahead and clear out that. And then on my circle of the sun, I can delete this stroke right here. And now I have two separate pieces with solid strokes and I can actually bring those like uh, sun rays back if I need to by readjusting where I slid this handlebar. Now, I think this is super cool feature to be updated and added here. It really, really helps you, um, you know, create these round repeat things. I mean, it's super easy. You can do it with anything. So if you just had a shape like this, maybe it's more of a diamond shape. You can select it, go to repeat and radial, and then really kind of mess with your options there. I mean, that's kind of a cool pattern already. Anyway, let's go ahead and actually increase the size by grabbing that handlebar. And you can see how they're just rotating perfectly here. And if you want to change that rotation, just double click and change your icon. I kind of like how it is there, but I want to add a few more and, you know, really just get some quick circular or radial repeats faster than you ever could. I think this is a really, really cool addition. Now they do have one more addition here, which is the grid function. Now this creates an actual like repeating pattern, very similar to the pattern tool in your swatch panel. And it gives you some of the same options. I have not messed around with this one quite as much, but this is really cool because it lets you just fill in like a simple space here. And I haven't really found a way to offset the repeat, but I could see some pretty good uses for this. Like if you were just really filling in something super simple or just creating like a really, really easy texture, like this, um, this square one kind of gives you a little waffle or something. But personally, I think that using the pattern tool is still the best way to get more of a, a grid or stair step kind of pattern, because with that tool, it's much easier to control how you can do like um, different kind of row and column repeats. I think that that beats this grid. I haven't found a use for it yet, so maybe I'll change my mind later. But mostly I think that this radial repeat and this mirror function is going to be the most useful um, way to really utilize their new tools. All right, that's going to be it for this one. Super short, super sweet, really easy. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed that. Let me know if there's anything that I didn't go over about these tools in the comments below, or if you have any specific questions about how, uh, how I might use these on other sort of uh, applications of art, or let me know how you plan on using it. And if this is your first time watching one of my videos, I really appreciate you guys being here and checking it out please uh, feel free to subscribe to the channel, turn those alerts on so that way you can get notified whenever I create more tutorials, more videos, and more just random drawings. Thank you guys. I really appreciate all the love and support. I just broke 200 subscribers this month. I'm super excited about it. 
And the last thing I want to let you guys know is that on my Instagram and my personal website, I sell some of my hand-drawn fonts. And this month, because of the winter freeze and storms that we've had here in Texas, I'm actually donating all of the profits from the sales of my fonts to uh, worthy causes and people that are helping feed Texans in need and give shelter to people who have lost their homes. And hopefully we can raise some money to make a big difference. I really appreciate you guys checking this out and I appreciate all the love and support and I will see you on the next one.